go. What's happening is Len Davis. I'm a Seattle film based filmmaker with Pangeality Productions and I'm down here in Palo Alto, California. An old friend from childhood, Toshi Hu, is now the director of the Institute for the Future. And when I reached out to Toshi to say, hey, let's get together, I'm coming to town. He said, hey, why don't you come down to my office? We've got a great program this afternoon. And that turned out to be with these guys. And we are outside of the Institute for the Future with the magic tool bus. And I just, this Sam and Claire, and I'm interested in learning a little bit about what you guys do and also what the role of the vehicle is and what you've done with it to support your work outside of the van. So tell me a little bit about who you guys are and where we are, what are we doing? Sure, well. Okay, so um, so the Magic Tool Bus is a 27 foot decommissioned uh, Portland TriMet shuttle bus uh, that I bought last August. Um, and then um, in January, uh, Claire came down to visit me in uh, Arizona and we started turning it into our living space. Um, Slash maker space, because we can't stop making things, both of us, so that was a really essential part of it. Yeah, Claire, Claire makes laser cut jewelry. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I used to run a t-shirt company and I make all sorts of stuff and I was doing a program in ecological design, um, building ecological systems. And so we started together, started making the magic tool bus because when we started trying to design a space that we'd want to live in, it's just like, well, there's got to be a laser cutter in it, right? We have to have the CNC, right? It just like had a bunch of tools. And so then we sort of, we've been developing this um, shtick, if you will. <laughs> we both love um, meeting people and having uh, fun around us and having a shtick. And this is really kind of a very good one because um, it's very welcoming and open and people want to learn about it and we just get to do whatever we want wherever we want so nice. it's really fun so am I correct in understanding that the bus in itself is this wonderful project but it's really also a both actual vehicle and metaphorical vehicle in which you're going to connect with other people in the work you're doing and this becomes an extension of these different systems and experimenting with them as well as inviting people into the space to collaborate and learn about what you're doing etc that's pretty much what it's become but it was, it's kind of it. like it's kind of emerged <laughs> into that um, like we came up with the name we were gonna travel around with it like and it's sort of and then it's like when we started putting stuff into it like um, like a lot of the stuff ends up being you know like we want to put in a thing called uh, a shower right but we don't want to carry around a lot of water and there's an open source project called the shower loop which is like an infinite shower that does all of, uh, recycles the water infinitely um, yeah but like solving for a tiny space is really satisfying for both of us um, neither of us we're both small we're both very small neither of us need to have a lot of stuff we like to have a lot of tools but other than that we don't need stuff so this has been a great um, problem solving kind of um, uh, challenge. Mm -hmm. It's super nice. fun. Let's continue the conversation yeah. inside so yeah. that you can continue to tell me about, I mean, what is the essence of this sort of looking into these systems to save the planet and the evo Nice. You didn't, there was no handle touch. What's going on there? <laughs> you know, magic. <laughs> um, so and that's the magic toolbox. Yeah, well, Sam figured out that the doors um, are articulating on their own, and they're supposed to be, but when we got it, it was missing the circuit board that yeah, did something that. Had, something had blown, so the doors never worked since we got it. So it was pretty annoying for a minute until Sam got bored at a party that we were at and stayed in the bus instead and figured out that he could hook it up too. Nice. Yeah, it was like if I hit it with negative 12 volts, it, op or it closed, it, you know, if I reverse the polarity, it, it opens. So then I realized that I could just use a $12 relay board, RF relay board from Amazon to do that. So and this is just a formerly fun. city of Portland, Oregon, yep, TriMet. Yeah, it says TriMet on there. Yep. It's all removed. Nice. When we're in Portland, it's really confusing. So, <laughs> so passing through in. the vortex into the magical tool bus. This is our front lawn with yep, the this is our grass. Nice. And, Welcome. Um, and then back here is our uh, power closet. Um, so it's not quite complete, but this is our, these are four deep cycle AGM telecom batteries. Um, so they can so. be oriented in any direction, which is really cool for us because we can set them there instead of say in a bench somewhere else because they don't have to be oriented in any particular direction. Cool. We've got our uh, solar panel power coming in nice. and our is that inverter. 
Okay. So this is like a charge controller, charges the battery, batteries power the inverter, and the inverter gives us essentially house power. And that's so that on the roof of the bus, ball. yeah? <laughs> nice. That's on the Solar roof, yeah. Solar-powered disco ball? Yep. And if you want, we can, um, I can, did you pop this up? Nope. So if you want to just pop the camera up there, you can see the solar panels. That's the... Nice. Yep. So 450 watts of solar. Um, that's what's running the star ceiling. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we sort of set it up so that th this area is the workspace. Um, this is in theory, Claire's area, and this is my area. Nice. So let's start with over here, Claire, you do laser cut jewelry. I do. And so you can see a couple of pieces um, for Maker Faire. This I actually cut out of a leftover pad thai container. So I'm cutting uh, recycled plastic as an experiment at the moment, but I also do acrylic um, full time. Okay. And can we get a quick peek at what the the main yes. piece of machinery is? So this is uses? my laser. Um, my travel laser. It's a Glowforge, which was one of the largest crowdfunding campaigns of all time, but then it took them forever to deliver. So a lot of people got a bit frustrated with that. And as of now, they're delivering them and they're nice. And I really think they're a great company. So sweet. Um, I love this thing. Wait, so I, this is all new to me. When you say my laser, you're primarily a cutter or is it that sort of assembly drip building something from a liquid that hardens? So it's, it's laser cutting is a subtractive method I take away from material with a laser and 3d printing is an additive um, type system, uh, 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 tool so both laser cutters and 3d printers are so new and so novel that people sometimes don't quite understand that the main difference is lasers will take away and 3d printers will add so I can't build up something mm -hmm. but I can cut any shape I want out of a variety of materials. And it can do nice. 3D engraving too. Yeah, and it can engrave. So within that sm smallish sandbox, I can do an immense amount of stuff. Sweet. I'm not sure why, but I'm getting crazy overexposure over here. So I'm just trying <laughs> to bring you over into the darkness. Nice. Yeah. So that's your workspace while you're on the road. You bring your business with you. Yep. Nice. And continue to sell things to as a business, but also... Mm -hmm. Um, I can adapt to whatever I'm selling at. So I've been making and selling stuff full-time for seven years and part-time for the bulk of my sweet. life. And what's the name of your enterprise or your business? Uh, Geek Star Costuming is me in particular, and that's where you can get all my laser cut jewelry. Sweet. So I'm doing a line for the Tool Bus, and you'll hear about it on our Instagram, but also I'm my own business. Nice. So. Geek Star Geek Costuming. Star. Yep. Sweet. And yep. then this side of the, the bus... So Tell this me about This is my... Uh, workstation and it's built off of the wheelchair lift so it's an 800 pound hydraulic wheelchair lift that works um, so I can open up these doors and um, lower it down and it goes from vertical to horizontal um, and then under here this is the open source precious plastic shredder um, for recyc uh, shredding recycled plastic. And so, if I understand correctly, based on the talk that we just watched, mm -hmm. that shredder is essential to a whole new movement of repurposing discarded plastic? Correct. Yeah, it's the precious plastic movement. It's the idea of recognizing that plastics are not trash. They are a metamaterial. They are extraordinarily useful. Um, and they're valuable. They're precious. Um, and so, but trash actually like most plastic trash is made for packaging so it's extremely high volume low material so you need the shredder to compact it so that you can then process it into other into sheets or extrude it into other shapes but once you've shredded it mm -hmm. do you inherently have to melt it to repurpose it or that's what i'm unclear uh, i mean not necessarily you could use it as some sort like a sort of like fixed fill insulation if you wanted to but the things that you can do with it are somewhat limited so, so melting it is kind of the next step so what kinds of things are you making with this whole setup here well that's i mean honestly like uh, shredding it is mostly as far as i've gotten um, I've built several extruders that will extrude it into like long, thin beads of stuff, and you can wrap that around stuff. You can do injection molding. And something uh, we're working on that we totally almost have is uh, flattening pieces into um, sheets, three millimeter sheets that I can cut on my laser. So if we do it out of uh, a number of plastics, there's actually a wide variety of plastics available that you can shred and then melt into a sheet and then laser cut. And we're working yeah. on that because it's it's difficult, but it's totally doable. It's like most most plastics are often mold 
making process is, but like to make custom molds is really expensive and slow and it's hard to iterate. So if you can make a sheet and then laser cut it, you bypass the mold method entirely. Optimizing things for rapid prototyping. Got it. Yeah. So um, what's at the essence of this? So what I see here is one manifestation of your traveling show and <laughs> way of being in the world and meeting new people, etc. But what is the essence of the work that you're doing that you're actually going on the road for? and the work that you're involved in that brings you to giving a lecture here today at the Institute hmm. for the Future? Uh, well, like something that like, this is sort of like an exploration of making a living space and having a tiny mobile living space confronts you of all these things that you typically take for granted if you have a house. Like even just having a light switch there took a long time. Getting basically house power, house light, and we almost have house water. And the difference there is that we had to build an entire power system from scratch just to be able to turn on lights with a switch. And we are going to have to build an entire water system just to be able to flip this and it goes whoosh. We call that house water because you don't, you have to do a lot to make that happen and it makes you value it. Mm -hmm. And it makes you understand the system in a way where you, it's just more, I really find it very satisfying. And, and there's it's been much a, richer. There's been a lot of stuff like, a lot of the ways that we're doing things, the reason that we do them is because it's the way that we've already, we've always done them. And so um, when you have to redesign your own space from the ground up, you're confronted with all these different challenges and sometimes the way that things are always done is not the best way. We could make this uh, only 5'10 because we're shorter than that. <laughs> you know, yes. it See? wouldn't work for everyone, but we had to build this for us and that's fine. Totally. So I, you can design things for, for some exact perspective. I'm off to the side because <laughs> yeah. I'm over six feet in right. my... <laughs> We run into that. So. Nice. Cool. Yeah. And so I, I don't want to go off into the van life and that increasingly being its own culture. I overheard you say earlier that it's great to share all these successes and failures with building your own system and learning from other people doing similarly. And I find that I love all of that and had a couple of Vanagans myself, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But I'm more interested in sort of the where this is a vehicle that you're going to places where you're engaging on the work you're doing when you're not living here, even though you're able to live here. But the notion of what you talked about back in the talk. Yeah, so the stuff that I've been like interested in is um, sort of off-grid, small-scale, regenerative, and easily replicable infrastructure. So um, solving problems for food, water, shelter, energy, and information, primarily. Um, and um, so this like is one manifestation of it. it's the mobile manifestation of that and so the mobile platform is one thing and then sort of the burning man camp scale you know is another manifestation of it and uh community settled in a city scale uh, is another thing of like given these different constraints how do you give people the tools that they need to meet their essential human needs so being confronted with those problems in here is a way to practice th that theory. Realistically, we, too. Yeah, and like we putting, run into problems all the time. Yeah. We're not perfect I mean, at I, these things. It's, it's like high. far from easy and far from. Not, we do things like that are very here, silly so all the time in here. Um, but that just shows you, yeah, it, it it's very realistic, and that's all the difference. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and like if, if, so, it takes us forever to get things like with famously like I'm very idea oriented and I always think things are going to take less time than they're gonna um, but that ends up being this thing of like when and if we can get things working in here then we can show them off and right. then we can talk about like this this at least is possible you know we figured out how to do this we'll build a shower loop and we'll be able to tell people this is what you want to look out for mm -hmm. you know or like yeah if you want to do exactly what we did at least you know that will work and then yeah. a lot of the stuff that we're building is based off of information on the internet that's the same way. Like the power system, I'm not an electrician, I just have the internet. Uh, and so it's, it's really interesting to have to engage with every single problem that makes the infrastructure um, that generally you would take <coughs> for granted if you have house power. Awesome. Yeah. Any other, I mean, we could talk forever, I think, <laughs> about so many of these different concepts and ideas and adventures. Um, are there any pieces of this that are most important to you that you'd want to share with this worldwide audience in this short interview? Um, I guess something that doesn't come up much for me that I think is kind of important is that if I were to watch a video like this, or if I were, a lot of times when I research this kind of thing, I get very intimidated. 
and I struggle with anxiety and depression and um, I, this is still doable and it's doable in a way where you don't have to be big and flashy and you don't have to surprise the world and you don't have to you know you don't have to be perfect you can just try new things you know um, I don't want people to think that this is so flashy that it's inaccessible to them because it's not so. mm -hmm. or just the motivation to create the things in their life that they're interested in right and like just like try some new things if you want to totally awesome <laughs> Great, thanks so much. We just lift the bed real quick so we can get yeah, a sense yeah. of yeah, yeah. this is where you're sleeping, but at the same time. This is our hangout area underneath. It's also our storage area right now because we're on our way to make a fair. So these are the original bus seats. Mm -hmm. And just to think that this vehicle had so many years of life prior to, you know, yeah. as in yeah, right? Portland public, you know, transportation. And every now and then in Portland, we'll get a nod from the, the um, other TriMet drivers. Yeah, they'll be like, we see what you did. Yeah. Awesome. Sweet. Well, I will include information in the description so that people can connect with you directly and follow what you guys are doing. Again, I'm Len Davis, a Seattle-based filmmaker with Pangeality Productions, and I'm here in Palo Alto, California. My old school friend, Toshi Hu, is the director of the Institute for the Future, where Sam gave a talk earlier, and then the talk included a tour of the bus with the people involved. I'm gonna step back out for a little context, but thank you guys so much. So sweet to see your space and what you got going here. <laughs> Yo, come back now. <laughs> Stay fresh, y'all.